Good morning, Apple billing department. We just announced the next generation MacBook Pro, so the orders are just gonna be pouring in now. Are we ready? Oh yeah, Tim, we can already see the orders coming in. We had everything prepared. We are totally set. That's great. And are a lot of people opting for the 16-inch and M1 Max versions? Oh yeah, this one idiot even paid for the 8 terabyte model. Can you believe that? That's extremely profitable. That's great. And our servers aren't crashing yet, right? No, no, we beefed up the billing like you asked us to, and I enacted the 6 percent cashback promo through the Apple card. That's gross. You, you did what? I thought yesterday we were supposed to let all Apple hardware purchases be 6% cash back on the Apple card, right? What were you talking about? We didn't discuss this right before the biggest Mac launch of the year? I swear I had an event in my iCloud calendar. It was right here. Oh, maybe that was from last year? You mean last year when we literally gave out millions of dollars worth of cash back because we had that promo stupidly going on during the launch of the Mac Pro and the Pro Display XDRs? Uh, I think I got the, the date wrong, the year wrong or something, so you didn't want the 6% cash back. Oh my god, this is gonna cost us a fortune. Oh no. That explains why the marketing department didn't run any ads about this. Oh jeez, for the love of Steve. Okay, or you are so lucky you're my nephew, otherwise I'd have to fire you. <sighs> I love Uncle Tim. Let's begin. So yeah, we finally hit the three-year mark with the Apple Card, and it's basically become my daily credit card ever since then. There's only a handful of things that I still put on our debit card, but for the most part, all of our shopping, all of our groceries, all of our services, all of our entertainment, all of our travel is put directly on this card because it's free, and it integrates so well with iOS, and despite all of my ranting on iPads in recent history, yes, I still am quite the Apple sheep when it comes to my software. And after using in the past different credit cards and still having my wife use her her regular credit cards. I think the most underrated feature after three years of ownership has to be that app. The wallet app is so clean, it integrates perfectly with your Apple ID, and there's not some additional password, there's not some stupid update and crappy banners everywhere like on all the other banking apps I've ever seen. With clunky user interfaces, constantly changing password requirements, and updates that break your face ID settings, the fact that the wallet app just opens and you don't have to unlock it every time is pretty sweet. If you want the private info on your credit card, you you do have to use Face ID, but what I primarily wanted to highlight today is, is the Apple Card worth it after three years of ownership? And I'm happy to report I use a credit card responsibly, so I've never missed a payment, I've never paid interest on anything, I always make sure the balance is nothing by the end of the month, which means that the 2% cash back I get with Apple Pay and the 3% or occasional 6% cash back I get with Apple is all pure profit. I didn't have to pay a certain amount of money to access this credit card, assuming you already have an iPhone. I guess you do have to buy an iPhone in order to apply for this, but I was doing that regardless, and I think a lot of us are. And thanks to the yearly activity tracker and it putting into very easy to read categories of here's all of your cash back, here's all of the money you spend on shopping versus groceries versus services, and even refunds so that I can accurately calculate how much money this one credit card has made me, but we'll have to start back in 2019. Now, it was the second half of the year that I got the credit card in, so this was not a full year's worth of cash back but in 2019, it generated $61.44, and in 2020, we had a more full year, which generated $137.44. So again, this isn't like retire and you don't need to work any more money, because of course it's a free credit card, but it's the kind of thing that can cover a lot of your memberships. So for some of you, it could be your Netflix, or your iCloud, or your Apple Music is now just totally covered because of the cash back you get with this card, thanks to that $137 bucks generated in 2020. But in 2021, it took a big spike, because of that skit that I showed earlier, Apple had the perfect glitch at the most perfect time when I was ordering the most expensive Apple product I've ever purchased, which is my 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, and yes, I even opted for the 8 terabytes of storage. I do actually use it, don't fight me. I record a lot of videos, okay? And buying storage for me is just like buying more time. But anyway, they had a glitch, and they offered 6% cash back very briefly to everybody that was pre-ordering, to everyone who was pre-ordering the MacBook Pros, and they quickly took that down because it wasn't intentional, but that year I actually generated $366.24 just through cash back on the Apple card. And this year's not over, but so far in 2022, I've generated $94.26. So that brings our total cash back from applying to this card to now to $659.38, which is pretty astounding if you consider that could basically cover the price of like an Apple Watch or several pairs of 
AirPods just through spending normally. And because I never missed a payment and I never had any interest generated on my account, that means that all of that money did not cost me a single penny, which is wonderful. But the cash back you receive on your Apple Card is totally going to depend on your spending habits. If you buy a new iPhone or a new Apple Watch every single year, you're going to rack up more of that 3% cash back over time, especially if you're the type of person to buy Mac Studios or some of you out there are thinking about buying the Mac Pro when that launches later in the year. And that's going to pick up some massive cash back returns. So if you spend a lot, you'll get more in cash back. And this is just kind of an indication for you guys of what my spending habits are like. And if you put everything on a credit card that is simple, easy to manage, and easy to know when payments are due, easy to know how much you need to pay, that's the kind of rewards you can get out of a credit card when you're using it responsibly. I don't recommend you carrying balances on credit cards or start paying interest on the payments because that's when you start living outside of your lifestyle and spending more money than you have, which I do not recommend. So I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not giving financial advice here. I'm just saying the Apple Card makes it painfully easy to stay on top of your payments. And I appreciated them raising my credit limit without asking several times. And I appreciate them honoring that glitch. They could have easily said, well, because we didn't advertise to you, it was going to be 6% cash back. We're just going to revert it back to 3%. They could have done that legally, but they chose not to. So Apple basically just threw me a bone there on my MacBook purchase. And there's only little things I would like changed. Like I've talked about before, when they first launched this card, it wasn't reporting to any credit bureaus, so it didn't help you build credit. Now, thankfully, it reports to all of them, so they finally fixed that. And for the longest time, I was asking them to support Mint, not Mint Mobile, but the Mint financing app, which we use a lot to kind of measure our investments and track our spending. And because Apple was Apple about data and spending habits, there was no way to plug in the Apple card to Mint. Now, thankfully, there is. It's a little bit delayed, but all of our Apple card transactions do show up in our budgeting apps. But the one last request, because basically every time I've done one of these reviews, I've brought up things that I would like them to change. And eventually it may have taken a while, but they did get around to doing it. I would just mention that it's sometimes annoying when you can't pay more than the credit card's current balance. I know that may sound stupid to some of you. Like, why would you pay more than you're actually due? But on previous credit cards I've had with clunky apps and clunky banks that don't know how to design software to be easy and intuitive to understand, if you bought a certain amount of things, your credit card would show a certain balance based on those last pending transactions. And with the Apple card, you can't pay off the card entirely until all of those pending transactions have posted. And a lot of the time, you know, I'm satisfied and I feel good about myself at the end of the month when I pay off the credit card and it reads zero. The user interface goes completely white in the wallet app and you just know, okay, the credit card is clean. There's no more pending transactions, but I can't do that a lot of the time because I'm waiting for some Amazon charge or I'm waiting for some restaurant charge to get out of the pending state and sometimes they'll be pending for like two or three days and with the Apple card you can't like prepay those pending transactions and say like hey I know that they haven't posted yet but I want to pay off the entire credit card for when those transactions are posted maybe there's some legal trouble Apple runs into when they start allowing you to start going negative hypothetically with the credit card but I don't think that would be that common of a situation most of the time pending transactions eventually go through and there may be some people that don't like that feature, but I just think it would be nice that if you had a card balance that was a certain amount based on pending transactions, you could pay it all off even if the transactions weren't done. That would fix my OCD and it would make calculating our budgets and how much money we have a lot easier because at the end of every month, I could just pay off everything that's on the card and know that it's a clean slate and it takes out exactly what I need from my bank account and I don't have to think about, oh, well, actually there's a couple more transactions we'll have to pay off later. So that's pretty much my only complaint. That and, you know, the, the paint on the card seems to scratch over time. But I'll be honest, considering I use Apple Pay in as many circumstances as I can, there's only a handful of places left that still I have to pull out my physical credit card for. But three years old, it doesn't look half bad. I've definitely seen some worse looking Apple cards out there. It's got some scratches and scuffs and stuff, but I've never replaced mine. This is still the original one that I unboxed all those years ago, and I take it everywhere I go. And of course, just like I say every single year, I wish Apple would bring this to more markets. It's upsetting and annoying that they only launch it in the US. I just have to imagine that banking laws and financial sectors must be far more complicated in other countries. So maybe that's why the Apple card has never left the United States. But considering how easy it is to pay off and how great the cash back is, that's likely why Apple has not done very much with this credit card. You know, they've introduced new tiers and new games on Apple Arcade and tons of new movies and shows on TV Plus and Apple News Plus. I, okay, I guess they've kind of given up on that one. But the Apple card has basically 
received like no updates. Like occasionally they get a few more vendors that support 3% cash back or like just recently for Apple card users, you get three months of Apple TV plus. They throw you bones like that pretty regularly. Like last year, they gave me three months of Apple News Plus, which I tried to use. And yeah, even in 2021, I just couldn't get into it. But even more recently, they were offering 4% cash back at certain retailers. So I guess they do updates with the Apple card, but I just mean there's still not like an Apple card plus or an Apple card pro, like a higher tier version or a new design or anything. And it's likely because Apple makes it so simple to pay off the card that very few people are actually missing their payments. And I don't think Apple actually makes that much money off of the credit card. Maybe they've decided that this is just not a super profitable business for them to pursue. So they're going to keep it going for now and they'll continue to have it, but probably just limit it to the US market and no plans on expanding it beyond that and no plans on making a higher tier version or anything like that. So I'm very happy with it considering I'm not typically a fan of Apple pivoting more towards a services company. Like I canceled all my iCloud subscriptions. I don't use Apple Music anymore and I don't pay for TV Plus. This is the one Apple service that I'm routinely using and I think the main reason is because it makes me money instead of charging me money. But how have you guys liked the Apple card and are there better cards out there that you think are more simple or more intuitive? I'm sure there's cards out there with better cash back. We all know about the Amazon Prime card and all your 5% back on all Amazon purchases. Yeah, we're happy for you there. But some of us don't like having a subscription to utilize a certain credit card and some of us don't want to pay annually for a credit card because that influences our buying decisions. I feel like everything I've paid for with the Apple card is the exact same stuff I would have bought with a debit card. So don't let these credit card offers steer your spending like, oh, well, if I get that one and I pay a hundred bucks a year, 300 bucks a year, that can justify me getting $400 in rewards on this particular thing. Like that's how they get you. You got to be careful, especially with those travel points and those travel cards. They give you a lot of rewards, but it's because they know the more you travel, the more you spend. You're buying hotels, you're buying plane tickets, you're buying more food, you're buying more Ubers. Whereas the Apple card, no influence on me whatsoever. My brain was already infected with the Apple virus. So there was no way that credit card was making it any worse. But all of your thoughts on the Apple card after three years, let me know what you're thinking down below. This is your Apple Sheep here and I'll see you all in the next one.